Hello, Moto. Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and Motorola just sent over their new Razer Plus for us to unbox and check out. This is their new foldable device. So we're going to unbox the Razer Plus, take a quick look what comes inside, and check out the foldable phone that has the largest outside display on a flip style phone. It's actually really cool and very useful. You can basically use it, fold it up as a normal phone. I also do have a hands-on video where I dive a little bit more into it. I can link to that in the description for you to check out after this video, but let's go ahead and get in the unboxing of the new Razer Plus from Motorola. Let's get started. Here's the box for the new Razer Plus. It does have a blue accent because they did send the Glacier Blue. There is a black and a magenta color that you can go with as well. Anyways, opening up the box right away lets you know, do not remove the internal screen protector. So there is one included. Uh, it lets you know that it voids the warranty if you actually uh, get rid of that. Anyways, setting the phone to the side, build some suspense, let's continue through. You also get a charging cable, USB Type-C to USB Type-C. Finally, standard booklets and SIM ejection tool. And I know what you came to see, the Razer Plus. Let's open it up. There we go, again, this is the Glacier Blue color, which I really do like. Um, I think that was probably my favorite out of the three. So anyways, we are gonna boot up the Razer Plus and while it turns on, I'm gonna take a closer look at the hardware. Down at the bottom of our Razer Plus, you've got a microphone USB Type-C port, one of the speakers moving along. On the right side here is where all your buttons are. You have a power button with a fingerprint scanner built in, two volume rockers, another microphone, which helps if you're on a call while the screen is closed because you have another microphone up towards the top. Very minimal camera bump with that dual camera system overall. And then along the left sides where that SIM card slot is and taking a quick close up of that hinge mechanism when it is fully closed, there is no gap. You'll see gapless, you cannot see through it, especially closer to the hinge and opening it on up, it snaps completely flat. On the back signature Razer branding with the Motorola logo and there's a quick look at that display, but the dual camera system, you have a 12 megapixel main lens with optical image stabilizations and a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, which also couples as a macro lens. Anyways, I'm gonna run through the startup process, talk about anything that's noteworthy. Like I mentioned, there is a fingerprint scanner built into that power button. Let's just set it up real quickly. A vibration motor is pretty solid. I wouldn't say it's one of the best I've felt, but it's not too bad after typing and feeling the vibration right now. Anyways, you can set up more uh, in the future. Actually, you can set up more now if you'd like to. We'll test it out in just a second. And just a quick PSA to take care of your phone. A few different things. It does have an IP52 rating, which is water repellent. Uh, so not quite as good as some other flip phones out on the market now, but still does have an IP rating at least. All right, we are all set up and ready to go. Here is our new Razer Plus. The inside display is a 6.9 inch P OLED display at 1080p resolution, also at 165 Hertz. Uh, definitely looks like a higher refresh rate is set out of the box. I also wanna point out it's a 22 9 uh, aspect ratio, so a little bit taller than you'd expect out of some other phones. And the outside display, a 3.6 inch P OLED screen at 144 Hertz. So even a higher refresh rate on this outside screen. It does give you a bit of a tutorial. You can tap for notifications. Those will show up and closing them. These are pages you can swipe down. And again, you can use it like a normal phone. You can open up apps, all of those good things. You'll have different shortcuts. So if you wanna to go to the weather, it'll pop on up or you can swipe left and right to get to your apps and a group of different ones. And when it comes to those apps, there's a Spotify widget, uh, there's games, and let's see, it's loading it up now after it did the tutorial, contacts, apps. So once you get to apps, uh, you'll see you have some, there's only six on the front screen, but now you can manage them. And out of all the ones that you do have installed, you can select specific ones. So if I want YouTube to show up, if I want the Play Store to show up, I can hit check. And then they should show up. There they are, YouTube and Play Store. So if I wanna watch YouTube on this outside screen, I can. If I wanna do a quick calculation, there we go. Boom, 
we're all good to go. And you just use your gestures. Now you'll also notice that you have the, oops, let me close out of that, the potential to fully utilize the screen down in the bottom here. And to do so, you press and hold on the either the recent apps button or I believe just this bar right down here. And some apps might not support it. So you'll see that doesn't seem like the calculator does, but you can use your gestures to quickly swap between apps as well. Opening up a different app, let's try Google Maps and just press and hold. There we go. So now you'll see it fully uses uh, the entire screen, but it will cut out some of your app, which is, you know, totally fine if you press and hold. If I don't need to press the saved updates button, or if maybe I do, then you can go ahead and zoom on in, check it out. Let's see what's going on in South Dakota. Oh, doesn't look like very much. <laughs> now with an app open on the outside display, opening up the phone just continues that application, which is great. Maybe you need to send a longer text, you need a little more real estate, which by the way, you can change, but also a continue button shows up. So if I press continue, there we go it will give me the option to continue the app. Now, if I hit search, look at this. I can type on the outside screen. So if you want to subscribe, uh, there we go. And there's a New Jersey and a Virginia <laughs> subscribes that pop up. Now, for example, you might not want all of the apps to continue in the outer display, maybe a banking app, something like that, that you're going to use uh, only on the inside display. You can customize that on a per app basis. I think it's in app settings. Uh, actually, it might be in the outer display, external display uh, settings. There it is, app settings right here. So let's say we want the calculator. It's not allowed right now. I don't, I don't need to do that, but let's go back into the calculator. Allow it on the external display. And this is within any app, again, per app basis. You can have it don't transition, tap to actually open up, which you already saw and then auto transition. So any time that you actually uh, close it, maybe like the camera app, you're gonna want that. So let's go to the calculator, close, and it should automatically pop up on that front screen. And again, let's go to the recent apps. There's our two calculators. What's it saying now? Tap to expand to full screen, okay. Again, you can just quick swap between them. You can use your gestures to go back and forth very quickly. Let's go back into those settings, go back into external. Actually, let's go into display and show off the display refresh rate. It's set to high, so it will optimize up to that 165 hertz, or you can have it smart optimized down to 60 hertz. You can't really customize or force a specific refresh rate. Now going back into the external display, you have you know lock screen, clock faces, a bunch of different ones. Uh, you can have little animals out there, different wallpapers as well. They give you a lot of different options, which I'm a big fan of. I'm glad that they really uh, give you customization because that's what makes a phone like this fun is being able to really tune it to your own liking. Also those panels, you can completely rearrange, customize. Let's say you don't even use Spotify. Why would you need that on there? Just uncheck it and it will go away. I personally do use Spotify. You can also add Google Fit and Google News. Also, if we go to call settings, you can flip open to answer and disconnect the call when you close it, or you can continue it. That's an option. And live preview. Obviously, when you're using the camera application, let's open that up for the first time. I don't need a tour of it. That preview is going to be on. So there I am. There we go. You can snap pictures or the person you're taking pictures of can see it. But this is another good example of, hey, I probably want to continue that app. It looks like it isn't set by default to continue. It might be, it might not. Let's unlock it. Let's try it once more. It doesn't seem to continue on that front screen. I thought it was set by default. Let's try and close out of the app. Go back into it. Close. It doesn't. So make sure you do go into the actual settings or while you're on this screen, you can flip twice and there we go. It's probably better to take a selfie with the lenses in the upper left hand corner. You can go ahead and don't forget, I already know, I know, I know. Oh my gosh, tap, boom, there's a picture. Again, you have your main lens, you have an ultra wide angle lens and that macro lens, which uses the ultra wide angle lens to get closer to your subjects, different modes, video portrait pro, and here's a look at all the different ones that Motorola offers. So camera was set to not transitioning. I switched it to auto and there you go. Now you can close it and there we go. It'll pop right up for you. 
Back to that front screen, since it's the highlight of this phone, sets itself apart from other flip phones on the market. By the way, the fingerprint scanner works really well. I don't even have to press the button, you can just sort of set your finger on and it will unlock it. Again, these are just quick shortcuts to the different panels. So if you know you're opening up that front screen, you wanna to go to games, it will quick swap to it as opposed to having to swipe all the way through to get to this shortcut. Again, there's all of your notifications. You can interact with them. You can respond to text messages. You can open the messaging app, all that good stuff. And there's a lot of fun games. Stack Bounce, Marble Mayhem are the two good ones in my opinion. They're a lot of fun. So let's open these up for the first time. So this game, you just basically need to bring the ball down and make sure you stop before it gets to the black color. Oh, and I just kept going. So there's that one. Let's go back and switch over to Marble Mayhem. These are just quick and easy games that are just a lot of fun and unique, just fun ways to use this front screen. I remember playing a game like this when I was a kid, but it was on an actual board with turn knobs uh, with a marble. But yeah, it goes all the way using the gyroscope all the way around to move that marble. Lots of fun. And again, you can use your gestures so you can swap between the apps that you had open. But anyways, that's just about everything I wanted to talk about for now with the Razer Plus. I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, also want to point out there is a bit of a crease. You can see that the light hits it right. If you're looking directly on, it's a little bit harder to see and you can feel a slight one. It's not crazy prominent, but just want to point out that there is a little bit of one. Uh, but overall, that's just everything I want to talk about. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe as well. A lot more content coming very soon. And as always, Thanks for watching.